Good day everyone. Welcome to the Denner Karaga Lumber Dealers Virtual Orientation. This is prepared by the Forest Utilization Section of the Licenses, Patents, and Deeds Division of Denner Karaga Regional Office. This virtual orientation covers three parts. Part 1 Legal Basis and Overview of the Lumber Dealer Process. Part 2 Procedures on the Lumber Permitting and Registration. Part 3 Violations and Penalties on Lumber Dealership The first part cover about the legal basis and overview of the lumber dealer process. The first of this virtual orientation is the legal basis. Dinner is mandated as the primary government agency responsible for the conservation, management, development, and proper use of the country's environment and natural resources, specifically forest and grazing lands, mineral resources, including those in reservation and watershed areas, and lands of the public domain, as well as the licensing and regulation of all natural resources, as may be provided for BY law in order to ensure equitable sharing of the benefits derived therefrom for the welfare of the present and future generations of Filipinos. Specific policies governing the nature of lumber dealerships are quite outdated already. First, we have Republic Act No. 1239 Series of 1955, where contractors or dealers of lumbers are required to register with the then Bureau of Forestry. Then the Forestry Administrative Order No. 26, Series of 1956, that is the forestry registration of agents, contractors, and dealers in logs, lumber and commercial piles. We have the Presidential Decree 705, or the Revised Forestry Code of the Philippines. The Ministry of Natural Resources Memorandum Order No. 13, Series of 1986 simplified the requirements for applications of lumber dealer permits from 12 to only 5 requirements. Another is the then Department Administrative Order 8, Series of 1994 is the most recent where additional requirements in the issuance of new certificates of registration as lumber dealers, including its renewal. Then the Department Memorandum Circular No. 18, Series of 1994 which provides in detail the approval of log lumber supply contract. We move to the overview of the lumber dealership process. Since the registration involves the multi-level process from Senro to Penro to Regional Office, this is classified as a highly technical transaction and called a government to citizen as to its type of transaction. The applicant must ensure that they have obtained the complete set of requirements listed in the checklist before submitting it to the Senro. Additionally, they must ensure that they have secured an approved lumber supply contract to demonstrate that the lumber products come from legal sources. The applicant has three usual purposes, to file the application, to submit lacking requirements, and to follow up on their application. On the part of the agency's action, the Senro evaluates and processes the application, including conducting site inspections, before endorsing it to the Penro. The Penro then reviews the application and endorses it to the regional office. Of course, incomplete submissions are returned to the applicant. These are the three levels of the Denner Senro, Senro, and regional office that must act on this application. Each level follows the same requirements but differs in the specific procedure. After the application is endorsed to the regional office, it undergoes further review, and once all requirements are complete, the certificate of registration is issued. Based on the Manual of Authorities, approval of the certificate of registration or lumber dealer permit is within the authority of the regional executive director. On emphasis, W2 lumber dealer permitting or registration is important because only the then registered lumber dealers are eligible to sell lumber products in the market. The registered lumber dealers vary from a lumber dealer itself, construction supply, wood furniture, or even wood processing plants are required to register to dispose of their lumber products. It's important to note that a registered lumber dealer is permitted to use a portable band circular saw for resizing their lumber products. However, they must obtain a chainsaw permit or registration from the Senro. Additionally, registered lumber dealers are authorized to process and sell furniture products for value-added purposes. It is then the responsibility of the agency that the lumber products available in the market are coming from legal sources. 
This is the part 2 which covers about the procedures on the lumber permitting and registration. Applying for lumber dealer registration, the applicant goes to the Senro concern in his her place of business. Here is a summary of the lumber permitting and registration procedure. First, the applicant prepares and submits to Senro a duly accomplished application form and completes supporting documents as provided in the checklist of requirements. Second, the application is received and referred through channel. The Forest Utilization Unit reviews and evaluates the submitted requirements. Only the complete application is accepted. Third, only the applicants with complete documents are accepted and are advised to pay the administrative fees of 2,116 pesos. The Senro concern set a site inspection with the applicant. Fourth, a team from the nearest monitoring, information, and assistant center is assigned to conduct site inspection verification of the lumber yard and submits an inspection report. The activity is guided or accompanied by the applicant to facilitate the inspection. Fifth, through the endorsement of the Forest Utilization Unit, the Regulation and Permitting Section, and the Deputy Senro, the Senro Concern reviews and endorses the application to the Regional Executive Director through the Penro. Sixth, at the Penro level, the application is received and referred through channel. Then, the Regulation and Permitting Section reviews and endorses the application with the recommending approval of the Chief of the Technical Services Division. And the seventh is that the Penro Concern reviews and endorses the application to the Regional Executive Director. Number eight, again, this time at the Regional Office, the application is received and referred through channel. Then the Forest Utilization Section of the Licenses Patents and Deeds Division, which is the process owner at the Regional Office, reviews and endorses the application to the Regional Executive Director to be reviewed and signed by the Assistant Regional Director for Technical Services and prepares the Certificate of Registration as Lumber Dealer. Lastly, the Regional Executive Director does the final review and approves the Certificate of Registration and forwards it to the Records section for release to the applicant and the copy is furnished to the concerned Penro and Senro. Inform the client through email, text, or phone call. Provide an acknowledgement letter to be filled up by the permittee. In the case of a representative, a special power of attorney or board resolution and a valid identification must be presented. The hearing checklist of requirements represents the whole set of documents required to process and approve the lumber dealer permit application based on the Memorandum Order 13 Series of 1986 and Department Administrative Order 16-2004. If one of the requirements is not attached or omitted, the application has no value, hence returned because it has violated the existing policy. First is the application form duly accomplished by the applicant himself herself and sworn notarized one original and two photocopies. Number two is the lumber supply contract agreement from legitimate suppliers or subsisting lumber dealers. It is governed by Department Administrative Order Number 8, Series of 1990. The same lumber supply contract is the basis for the issuance of the validity period of the lumber dealer permit. Through this, a registered lumber dealer is allowed to receive lumber products from places outside the region or area of business. As the lumber supply contract is a prerequisite for the lumber dealer permit application, it must already be approved and should not be filed concurrently with the permit application. In reality, the approval of the lumber supply contract is a distinct process on its own. In practical terms, the office has no specific requirement for the quantity of lumber products to qualify an applicant as a lumber dealer. As long as the applicant presents a business plan outlining how the business will be conducted, there is no minimum or maximum volume of lumber products needed for qualification. Number three is the mayor's permit or business permit to be secured from the LGU of your place of business. Business permit a legal document that offers proof of compliance with LGU regulatory, structural, and safety, as well as the sale of products. For taxation purposes, the LGU may issue a mayor's permit or business permit. Number four is the annual business plan program by the applicant through the assistance of a registered forester. 
The business plan is a guide on how the lumber dealing business is operated. A necessary amendment of the business plan is required to conform to the actual operation. Fifth is the forestry administrative fees of 2,116 pesos. This is composed of registration fee of 600 pesos, permit fee of 480 pesos, oath fee of 36 pesos, if administered by y dinner, and lastly, a performance bond of 1,000 pesos. It is after the review of documents and found complete, the applicant is advised to pay at the central concern. Sixth is the latest income tax return of the applicant secured from the nearest office of the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Item 7 would be the output of the site inspection team from the Senro concern. Conduct an inspection of the establishment and prepare report with attachments map, geotage photos, and inventory of stock balance with tally sheet and stand and stock table. Lastly, would be the proof of ownership of the lumber yard, otherwise, consent agreement with the owner. When it comes to the renewal application, in addition to the items, ISA, ANIM under the new application would be the number 7. This is the ending stock inventory report duly subscribed sworn, and to be prepared by the permittee. Another is the number 8, which is the summary reports showing the monthly lumber purchases, production, disposition sales ending inventory report, and other relevant information within the tenure of the permit duly attested by the Sinro concern. Similar to other regulating government agencies, the DENR also monitors our lumber dealer permittees. We have regular monitoring activity, compliance evaluation for permit renewal, and the conduct of enforcement operations in case of illegal activities involving lumber dealers. In detail, the first is the regular monitoring activity at the Senro level. The Senro concern conducts unannounced monitoring of the permittees within its jurisdiction. Another activity is conducted at the Senro Monthly Price Monitoring. A price monitoring of forest products such as the FOB market price of logs and selected non-timber forest products covered by Republic Act 7161 or Forest Charges Law and Domestic Retail Price of Lumber, Wood Panel Products, and other non-timber forest products. The monthly price data of forest products from predetermined regular monitoring retail outlets including the lumber dealers are gathered. The second is during the permit renewal where the summary reports showing the monthly lumber purchases, production, disposition sales ending inventory report, and the stock inventory report are required. The third one is about the enforcement operation. It is when the office receives reports of illegal activities or through surveillance involving the lumber dealers. This is being undertaken by the Senro concern or in tandem with the regional office as needed. Another important part of being a lumber dealer is to get acquainted of the terms and conditions. For a certificate of registration holder, we have 10 items. 1. Display the certificate of registration within the establishment's premises exposed to public view. 2. Submit to the concerned center office of monthly stock purchase and disposition reports every the fifth day of the succeeding month to include, among others, the following, balance of previous month, purchase as made during the month under report, total volume quantity handled, volume sold, balance at the end of the month, and statement of resources. 3. Allow authorized dinner personnel to inspect the premises of its lumberyard for monitoring and evaluation. Number 4. Provide information and or intelligence essential to forest law enforcement, more particularly on violation of Republic Act 1239, Republic Act 460 and Presidential Decree 705, as amended, giving the names and addresses of the violators and the nature of violations. 5. Issue sales invoices of lumber sold to end user and assist buyer in securing transport documents when lumber is sold outside the province. 6. Buy lumber materials only from approved suppliers and other legitimate sources with complete transport documents. 7. Maintain cleanliness of its lumberyard by establishing and maintaining solid wastes management facilities and observance of the proper disposal of wastes. Number 8. File the renewal application within 60 days before it expires. 
failure is construed that the registrant is no longer interested to pursue the trade. 9. Secure resolve permit immediately upon receipt hereof if using circular or band sauce complementary to its lumber dealership. And number 10. Submit additional lumber supply contract from legitimate sawmill operator and or lumber dealers within 60 days upon receipt hereof. And we have additional conditions for log dealer we have four conditions. First is in accordance with section 79 of P. D. 1559, the hearing permittee must issue an invoice for each sale of log stating the kind size sold, the same as that described above in the provisions. Second, violation shall be sufficient ground for at least two years suspension of the license and least 200 pesos fine or value of the invoice, whatever is greater. Third, this certificate authorizes the holder to sell domestically logs produced from its own concession area. And fourth, this certification is likewise subject to all rules and regulations that the Bureau of Forest Development may hereafter prescribe. This one also presents the additional conditions for lumber dealer and lumberyard operator. We have four conditions. First, this certificate authorizes the holder here to purchase lumber from its subsisting lumber supplier and that lumber purchased are for domestic sale especially for the immediate community. The purchase of lumber from other sources other than its subsisting supplier is not allowed under this certificate. Second, this certificate is likewise subject to all rules and regulations that the Bureau of Forest Development may hereafter prescribe. Lastly, violation shall be the same as the above in log dealership, which are stipulated in number one and two of the additional laws, rules and regulations. For the part three, covers about the violations and penalties on lumber dealership. The following are the prescribed prohibitions. First is to use the certificate of registration as a subterfuge in shielding lumber stock of dubious origins. Being a registered lumber dealer binds the permittee with the den not to use its position for tricky actions or deceit to cover up or hide illegally sourced lumber. The second prohibition is to purchase logs, posts, piles, and lumber that were illegally cut. And the third is to establish any wood processing plant, e.g. sawmill, mini sawmill, and or other powered saws that can slice logs, glitches, posts, and piles into pieces of lumber, unless with express written authority issued by the den. According to Department Administrative Order 2021-05, lumber is defined as a log that has been hewn or sawn with a thickness of less than 6 inches. Therefore, lumber dealers are only authorized to receive and sell lumber that meets this requirement of having a thickness of less than 6 inches. On the other hand, these are the following causes of cancellation of the certificate of registration. First is the commission of the holder and or his authorized representatives or agents of any of the prohibitions, as previously discussed and failure to submit the said basic requirements on its operations, as a lumber dealer, where the discussion was covered in part 1 of this virtual lumber dealer orientation video series. Second is when found out that the certificate of registration was secured through fraud. Upon discovering that the certificate of registration was obtained through fraudulent means, the immediate action of the office is to revoke the said certificate and investigate the matter further. Third is that cancellation of the lumber dealer certificate of registration may occur if the terms and conditions of the registration, the provisions of Republic Act 1239 and Presidential Decree No. 705, as amended, or the internal revenue laws and regulations are violated. This emphasizes the importance of compliance with the regulations to maintain a valid certificate of registration for lumber dealers. Let us tackle the common violations in the lumber dealing business. Most is the selling of lumber products not included in the log supply contract. However, in view of the recent deregulation policy on planted species, the permittee is not restricted to accepting lumber products provided the delivery has complete transport documents with certification from a registered forester. Another most common violation is the selling of lumber products without the certificate of registration. As a matter of regulation, individuals or corporations or associations really need to secure the permit for the legitimacy of their lumber dealing business. Finally, talking about the penal provisions. Number 1. In consonance with the provisions of Republic Act 1239, persons found directly or indirectly responsible for violation of any provisions of this order or the terms and conditions stipulated in the registration certificate shall be penalized by a fine not more than 1,000 pesos or imprisonment of not more than one year, together with the cancellation of the certificate of registration. Number 2. Lumber stocks found inside the yard storage site that are not supported with proper documents usually required by the dinner are presumed to be illegal and would be subjected to seizure and confiscation in accordance with the pertinent provisions of Department Administrative Order No. 97-32. That concludes our Lumber Dealers Orientation video series. If you have questions or clarifications, please feel free to contact us through telephone numbers 8171545 or email at ordcaraga at gmail.com. Thank you very much for your time.